so this is part two of the phase change heat pump project and today the refrigerant charging hose and the service valve arrived um, I wasn't sure if they were going to fit because I've no experience with refrigeration fittings at all so I'm happy that they did fit so I'll put links in the description to exactly what I ordered um, but this is a hose here on the end it's got like a a piercing bit there, it's got a bit in the middle that actually connects to this service valve and that fits on there like that and it just screws in and you put it on quite tightly and this other end here would then go in your refrigerant charging bottle but what you're meant to actually do is you're meant to actually put this into the middle of a gauge set and have gauges hooked up to the system so you know the high side pressure and the low side pressure but I don't really need to go to that length. I reckon I could uh, charge it just by sight and feel, hopefully. Uh, but yes, yeah, so that's that's a standard charging hose. Um, it's a quarter inch SAE, I think. Now on eBay it says these things, these valves are like for R134A, but I don't know if that's just a generic keyword to use or what, but. Hopefully it should work with R600. The only thing that's bothering me is I might not be able to get this hose to fit onto the refrigerant can I've ordered and uh, the tap for the can, I'm not sure if that will fit either. And this does come with, like, you could remove the valve inside if you want, but that just goes on there like that. What will happen next is I will cut this off, my torch is hot enough to uh, unbraze that so that will be cut off and this will be put inside and this service valve will let me charge the system and also um, hopefully put it under vacuum as well I'll need to find some way of connecting this up to another compressor which I'll use as a vacuum So that's that cut off. There will be little pieces of copper inside there. So what I'll do is I'll blast compress there inside into the suction connector and I'll blow it all out. Uh, that was just uh, the compressor turning on there. Uh, but that's my air receiver for such a tiny little air compressor. Make sure that you drill very carefully, get the drill on a very slow speed and you want to use a, a small drill bit and gradually work your way up. I don't actually have a 6mm bit so uh, I'll have to make the whole 6.5 but that'll be fine, the solder will fill in the gaps. Chuck on this drill isn't the greatest, unfortunately. You don't want to drill in too far um, or you could end up 
wrecking the connector and then you'd probably have to cut it off and then uh, start again about a centimetre is a good sort of length to put it in that's, that's all I've done And that's all done. I found there was still some little pieces sort of lodged inside that the air wasn't getting out so all I did was twist the dish round inside while I was blowing air through and now it's totally uh, clean. There's no bits in there anymore. And our service valve should fit on there. There's quite a bit of play in that, um, but the solder should hopefully fill all that in. So the next thing you want to do is rub down the end of the service valve with steel wool thoroughly and then you just want to put a light coating of flux. This is just normal electrical flux, uh, nothing special. And just roll it in the flux make sure it's applied well and also put a little bit into the uh, service port here make, making sure it's got a nice coating there we go then I'll get the uh, hydrogen gas torch going and we'll get that soldered on well I've decided that the whole thing is a little bit long so I'm going to cut it shorter. What you should also do is um, you should remove the valve core. Uh, usually service valves will come with the core remover so you, you just put the cap in like that, twist it round and it comes out. And the reason you have to remove that is so you don't melt the the neoprene or rubber seal or whatever it's made of um, by the heat and then just leave that to the side. Right, so I've just got standard electrical solder here and I'm going to try and heat them up as evenly as I can. That's just moved but it doesn't really matter, I can always bend it in the right position. Just keep adding flux as well, um, because it does burn off. You don't want it to all completely burn off. Right, so that seems like a reasonable joint, so burn off all the excess flux. There we go, leave that to cool. And then you just want to screw back in the valve core. That's pretty much just the exact same sort of thing as what you'd find in a bicycle or car tyre. So that's where we're up to so far, um, and then as you can see, the refrigerant charging hose fits on there like that.
And now I just have to wait until the Canovar 600A refrigerant arrives and also uh, the tap that will go on top of it. Now I don't know if I've ordered the right tap to fit on top of the bottle. I ordered two different types just to be sure. Uh, but I might arrive tomorrow.